Welcome to Around Town, featuring what's happening here in the greater Concord area. I'm your host, Dick Patton, and beside, on behalf of myself and my director, Ian Marks, we're here to present today's program, and I'm pleased to have Paul Brogan, my guest, come on. And Paul and I, of course, we love to talk and chat about the old days, and we probably will today, too, as you know how it is when we get to be our age, but... First off, though, Paul has got something else going on that he, we're going to talk about first, and uh, he also does some teaching. And uh, now, Paul, where is it? Down at uh, Manchester Community College, or is it uh, UNH? Where is it down It's there? actually Granite State College That's right, Granite on State Hall College. Street, where Bear oh, Wright I, used to be. I was thinking you were down in Manchester, <laughs> so it's, it's on mm -hmm. Hall Street. Well, they have campuses in Manchester and Portsmouth, I thought they did, and I've yeah. done classes at both of those. But the next class I'm doing in April is here in Concord. Now, Grand Estate used to be something else, wasn't it? The building was Hesser College. Well, I know for a that. While. Yes. yes, but Grand Estate, I'm not. They're affiliated with UNH, the UNH. So they weren't the system. opposite of Hesser then. No, no, okay. they weren't. Right. That was something else that went. Yeah. Uh, I guess that went, went belly up, up also. Yeah, it went up, yeah. So this, uh, this is a stable, and it seems to be thriving and doing very well. Okay. But they have a program called OLLI, O-L-L-I, which yeah. is the Osher Lifelong Learning uh, Institute. Um, okay. And they're all over the country. There's hundreds of them. Wow. And they're available for people over 50. So in about 12 years, you and I would be eligible oh, to gosh, be members. Yes, I know it. And they... Um, People come in and, and make themselves available to teach every kind of topic or subject from politics to uh, famous murders in the community and, you know, different things. And uh, it's very affordable. You become a member uh, for like $30 a year and then you can take these classes. Uh, and it's, it's really been fun. I've mm, done about mm. 20 of them now wow. and had about 500 students. My goodness. And well, I'm a ham at heart as oh, we yeah, well I know. know. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and so I get to stand up there and talk, uh, about it's film classes that I do. And I get to tell people stories about my own interactions with Catherine Hepburn or Doris Day or Eileen Fulton I know. and some of the other people mm. before showing films with, you know, that individual in it. And so it's, it's a great uh, and entertaining way for people to discover perhaps an actor or actress or a film genre they might not have ever you know, given any thought to. Mm. And, you know, people can go on the website, which is Olli, O-L-L-I, at Granite State College. All the classes are listed for all the locations. Mm. Portsmouth, Manchester, Concord, and Conway also has wow. one. And um, there's probably about 1,500 members in New Hampshire. Wow. And uh, it's just... A really nice. I hope someday, when your schedule permits, you'll come. You know, yeah, be a guest at one of the yeah. classes just to check it out. Sure. But your legislative duties and all of that. But I bet they'd love to have you teach a class. Oh yeah, something. I'm sure they would. Public yes. affairs or yes, I'm sure. what? Sixteen years of doing a community-based talk show. I mean, you have probably. How many shows have you probably done? Five hundred. Well, I've done. I've been. This is my eighteenth year. Yes. Starting okay. nineteen in September. Okay. Well, yeah. You figure at one time I was doing five shows a night, four mm -hmm. shows a night, three mm -hmm. shows or whatever, depending <clears throat> what the, my director would want to do, or he could stick around. You know, because mm -hmm. it is all volunteer. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Well, it's the same way with the Ollie things. Sure. I don't get paid to do this. You don't get paid No, you don't get nothing. Oh it's goodness. just an opportunity to share your knowledge with a group of people who uh, appreciate that. Mm. It's a non-profit, which is why yeah. a wing yeah. of, of uh, yeah. UNH. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's not. You don't do it for that. You do it because it's an opportunity to share perhaps something. This is why the class that I did, we talked about at one point when I was on the Faith show uh growing up catholic mm. that was also for the ollie program and it was a chance to share experiences about growing up 
as a Catholic and the different things that happened. And now, do you give these students tests and all that? Stuff? No, no oh, yeah. tests. No it's, tests. It's, it's just a... it's it's learning for the fun of it. Okay. So and uh, and my class is a four week class here. Four weeks. And I'm also going to do a class out at New England College, How which long is does five weeks, uh, two and a half hours each class. Okay. So it's for four weeks, yeah. and uh, it's just. It's it's a great opportunity. I mean, it's amazing to watch. You know, generally there's 25 to 35 people in the class, and watching the light come on as they discover something they'd never really considered before, and uh, it's it's just. Uh, I think you know you're the same way. I think at a certain point in our lives, we want to give back mm-hmm. because. We've been very fortunate growing yeah. up here in Concord. Oh, yeah. And I think people that grew up in Concord in the era we did, the 50s and 60s, mm. it was instilled in you that um, your experiences and everything else are making you the kind of person you are and that at some point in your life, if you have a chance to give back to others, you should do it. Mm. And I think, you know, going back, I mean, we've talked about many and standing out there for the Salvation Army and oh, yes. bitter and cold problem, yeah. and all of that. And it's the same with the Grange. I mean, the hours you give to the Grange, you don't get paid for that. Gosh, no. um, but you're continuing a tradition and you're doing something that's helping other people on so many levels. Mm. And I think that's a conquered trait, at least in our era. I don't know whether people growing up now have that instilled in them I, I because it's such a do. different world now. I don't think they, I, I shouldn't say this, but I don't think they do no. as much as we do. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, as you said, we're, we were kind of embedded with it or taught by our mm-hmm. parents, especially yes. our mothers, yes. to try and give back. Mm-hmm. If you receive something, just don't take, take, take. Exactly. You know, exactly. And so, and myself, I love the, what the best part is to see the smiles on somebody's mm-hmm. face, especially the kids at the tree lighting or the parade or something. Yes. Or even the adults at awards night when I when I hand out the awards, you know, to recognize them mm-hmm. because they didn't write a million dollar check to name a wing after them, right? Or to name a road after them, or whatever. Mm-hmm. They stood out there and did what they had to do with their right. hands and tried to whatever they they just mm-hmm. they, they've worked it. Yes, you know, and uh, I mean they just that's where they were. And I think it just is a natural part of who we are yeah. and um, and I think that that's you know a, a wonderful trait to have on so many levels because mm. it it keeps you constantly looking for ways that you can do something uh, I mean it was the same when I did that radio show a couple of years ago I didn't get paid for that no, but no. I got to interview people like yeah, you and good. other businesses and nonprofits it and was a good show and it was a lot of fun, and it was another opportunity to yeah, you know yeah. reach out to people and help them hopefully to understand why Concord is such a unique place, mm. and why when you and I sit here and talk about the good old days, <laughs> oh, I know. it's not just uh, you know only a stroll down memory lane, but it's a great education, and I don't think. In fact, I know in the schools, there's no class or course that gives students locally a history of this city. I mean, they don't know about the railroad station. They don't know that Concord was a hub for the Boston and Maine Railroad for many years. They don't, you know, know all of the... you know, intricacies that made mm-hmm. the community what it is. They know the now, but they don't, you know, have that background. And I've always thought it's a shame that there isn't a class in your community to, you know, help you better appreciate where you are. I know, because it's true. There's so much. That's what I've said before, even like with the Heights, because there's so much that went on up here. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. luckily, the Grange has recorded a lot of that history, because Mm -hmm. when you say Burglars Island, they don't know what you're talking about. No. Or the Dark Plains, Mm -hmm. they Mm -hmm. don't know what you're talking about. No. So, I mean, it's 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 really a history Mm -hmm. lesson. Mm -hmm. And... You know, talking about your class. Now, in your class, do the students really, they sit there, they get amazed, and then you say, yes, I, do they know who Audrey Hepburn is? 
Do um, they know who you people Yes, because from? the you have to be over 50. So oh, they're okay. all, oh, you know, okay. yeah. um, they're of the the era that they know who the people are, but they may never have seen any of their films or haven't seen them mm. in 40 mm. years or yeah. 50 years since they were young. And I try to add little anecdotes and stories that sure. make it a little bit more, yeah. you know, uh, personal so that when they're then looking at a film, they look at it in a slightly different sure. way instead of just, oh, it's just an old black and white movie oh, or, I know. you know, something like that. So, Ian, do you know who Catherine Hepburn is or Audrey Hepburn? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty... oh well, <laughs> well, yeah, I figured that, but yeah, okay, well, that's good then. And of course, Catherine in New Hampshire filmed on Golden Pond yes, on Golden back Pond. in the summer of 1980, mm. and um, and uh, I got to meet her then, and then we became friendly through the years after that. And Doris I... Day too, you mentioned. Oh her. yes, yes, I still her birthday's coming up, and we wow. talk on the phone every. Five or six weeks, and oh, that's um, nice. she's doing great. She has a beautiful home in Carmel. She owns an inn, and just a really peaceful life. And she's, Eileen Fulton, your friend. Who I you wish I could talk to her again. I would love to talk to her. <clears throat> and um, she, oh, what's she doing now? Nothing since this, fifty years on that soap. I know, and then gone. boom, it was gone. Yeah, and because CBS Procter and Gamble that yeah, uh, yeah. sponsored yeah. it decided that soap operas were not uh, the way they wanted to go anymore. And so that and Guiding Light, which was also Procter & Gamble. Well they, well, they had Love of Life. They had Search yes. for Tomorrow, <clears throat> mm-hmm. Guiding Light, Secret Storm. Yes. All of them. All of those. Yeah. And they said that everything changed around the time of O.J., because suddenly the public was transfixed yeah. with a real life oh, yeah. story, yeah. <clears throat> and people started tuning out. You know, all of this. There's only four left now, and once upon a time there were about fifteen. Yes. Well, I think also the problem is that they want mm. stories that are going to move. Yes. And yes. unfortunately, the daytime dramas tend to drag. Yes. Because they, five they, days a week, and they want it, you know, yeah, it could take I mean, six months to oh yes, get mean. from here to here. Exactly. And and people today want everything speedy, whether it's yeah. their cell phone or electronic devices or anything else. But people are sick of the talk shows. Yes. I, I mean, I on mm. Facebook, that's all I hear mm-hmm. or read is that they're mm-hmm. tired of the chew. Yes. They're tired of the talk show. Yes. They're tired of this one, that one. Mm-hmm. And it's true. I mean, how mm-hmm. many can you... I mean, at one time, we had all talk, all game shows mm-hmm. in the morning. Yes. You could start out with concentration, mm-hmm. go to mm-hmm. beat the clock, mm-hmm. price is right, you know, and all those. Mm-hmm. And then all, then in the afternoon, you had the ten. I mean, all the $10,000 pyramid. Mm-hmm. That was on for yes. quite a while. And then in the evenings, you had, what's my line? I've got a secret yes. uh, to tell, tell the, the truth. truth. Yes. <clears throat> you know, you had all of password, oh, all yeah. of those in the evening. And, yeah. um, but, you know, I used to learn so much from some of those because some of the guests they would bring on, you know, mm-hmm. what's my line? You'd find out that, oh, that's so-and-so who did this and this and this. Yeah. So there was an educational component. Of course, back then, you didn't have commercials no. every five no, minutes. I know it. You know, 20 commercial. A show was brought to you by one sponsor. Yeah. And they advertised at the beginning, 15 minutes in, mm. and again at the end. Yeah. And so you didn't have all of that coming at you constantly. I know, I can remember Arlene Francis on mm-hmm. um, What's mm-hmm. My Line. Uh, Kitty Carlisle. Carlisle Hart. On, uh, yeah, Kitty Carlisle on uh, yep. To Tell the Truth. To Tell the Truth. Yeah. And uh, Bess Meyerson yes. was on oh, one of yeah. them. Yeah. And Alan Ludden, of course, was the host. And Betty White was on Password yeah, frequently. She was on, yeah. That's where they met. But, but I mean, that's, yeah. that's the trouble. But see, today it's all talk shows yes, it or is. whatever. Yes. And it's just, it's boring. And sensational talk shows. Oh, There's yeah. got to be something, you know, yeah, that somebody's done. Yes, that somebody's done to somebody. Yeah. And people get angry and upset. And tr- they try to make them you know, react mm-hmm. in a certain way. And it's, it is. It's, it's sometimes very distracting to turn on the television. And years ago, you know, we had less channels, but there was always something to oh, I know. watch. Yes, I know. <laughs> Romper room and all that. Yes. Jazz, but, Big Brother know, Bob Emery. Yes. Captain our Cup Kangaroo. Yes. Yeah. Our Cub Scout 
uh, uh, from St. Peter's Church, PAC 74, went down to Channel 4 to be on Big Brother. Really? Emory. Yes. We went Uncle Gus. We thought yes. that was a big deal. Yes. Oh, no. We went all the way to Soldiers Field Road. and Boomtown on Saturday yes. and yep. Sunday. Of course, was... Ian, you remember Boomtown, don't you? What do you mean you don't remember yes. Rex Trailer in Boomtown? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 So I have to make sure he's not sleeping he's over there. He's a youngster. He's going to keep me in line, so I'll make sure he's not sleeping. <laughs> but yeah, I know. But it, yeah. it was an entirely different. And uh, today, I can't say they don't know what they're missing, because if you've never experienced it, then yeah. you're not missing it. Well, you're... the shows are just... Even the kids' shows are just, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's They're, a whole different, uh, you know, I watch periodically The Muppet Show is back in the oh, time yeah. of the evening. Yeah. And it's not the same as The Muppet no. Show 40 years ago. No. There's a, there was an innocence. They still and, got you and I on there, though. Yes, they do. The, the sitting two, there. The yes. two old men yep. sitting in the, in the balcony there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I thought of that, and I thought if they ever want to do a real know, life version yeah, with people, I'd be I happy to volunteer us to sit there. The yes, but, making uh, comments. Yep, not the worst thing to do. When but, you went well back to Grand State College yes. for a second, mm-hmm. now when you go in there, because mm-hmm. that must bring back memories of the mm-hmm. first national sh- store that was in. There. Absolutely. Oh yes, yes. I was thinking that when you said mm-hmm. that because mm-hmm. yeah, that was first national. Mm-hmm. After they moved off of South Main Street. It was. It was. And that was quite a busy place to go. Yeah. And, of course, it served that entire end of town. There was the other one up by where Polly Susan's was in McKee Square. Oh, what that was, was that? a grand... Well, Union was, Champagne? Well, it was Champagne. Yes, okay. Yeah, Champagne. Yeah. Up there. Because but... the other grand union was named Sampson's, and that mm-hmm. was up uh, North State yes. Street. Yes, Yeah. But uh, no, I I, re- I remember the you know first national. I went there many times, and yeah. you know as you were going out of town, if I t- took Hall Street down to Route Three, yeah. you know I'd often stop in there and get something. Sure. And, and it was, you know, it was. But well, it is for it's... us. We always had to stop at uh, Janet's Donuts to get oh, something. If we we're but going, of course. Out. If we were going down to my aunt and mm-hmm. uncle's in Rhode Island, mm-hmm. like we used to. They always wanted at least a dozen of their donuts mm-hmm. to bring down, so we did. But uh, Janet's was amazing. Oh, wasn't it, it truly that was little, that little shop there, and brother, they had Frank Goodsell was on the stove over mm-hmm. there cooking donuts or whatever, and then you could smell the baked beans they mm-hmm. were cooking and brown bread and all that jazz. And, and they started like at two in the morning making oh, yeah. the stuff because you could yeah. smell that entire part yeah. of town. Yeah. You could, you know, smell the, the donuts the cooking. Donuts. Oh, yes. God, they were good. Yeah, they were good. They were good. And, and they this, were a donut. It mm-hmm. was a donut. Not yes. one of those. And the jelly donuts were filled. Oh, you yeah. barely yes. touched them and it was just amazing. My mother truly... loved the lemon-filled donuts. Mm-hmm. I didn't like lemon I didn't either, because they had powdered sugar yes, on them. And did. that wasn't the same yeah. as the other sugar. No, it wasn't. No, no, there's this. But I just, you know, when I think of First National, I mean, <clears throat> and then after mm-hmm. they went out, of course, up there on North, uh, South Main Street, do you remember the store that took their place? Super Duper. That's right. It was Super Duper, That's they right. called it. <laughs> That's right, it yeah, did. It that was, was Super Duper. That was before Haggard's. Yes. 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 Yeah. Super duper. Yes. And it was more like things were in uh, boxes. Or it wasn't, I don't think it wasn't, I ever went in there. It we went in there once or twice, mm-hmm. I think, and that was mm-hmm. it. But that, wasn't that wasn't that there a long time, no, was it? No, they didn't no. last too long. No. But and then, yeah, then Haggis went in there. Yes. And that was there and for I'd a long time. I'd forgotten that because they were on the heights around mm-hmm. one time mm-hmm. on yes. Mountain Road. Yes. And they were bro- people coming to the Concord Theater often in the evening park in there because the store wasn't open except oh, sure, Friday yeah. night. Yeah. Figuring, you know, it was as good a place to park as any. And then they started uh, coming down and giving tickets oh, yeah. and put up signs and everything else, even though they weren't open. Yeah. But uh, I remember how angry people got. And well, We're not going to go to Haggett's anymore if that's the way they're going to be. Oh, yeah. But people walked, though, I mean, to the movies. When I think of... You know, we played movies like Rocky, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, you know, things like that, where we sold out 500 people at each performance. And I wonder where people parked. Yeah. You know, now they want to park right there and walk right in. But, mm. uh, I mean, that's a lot of people and a lot of cars. Maybe they parked down in the Capitol Shopping Center and walked up the hill. 
But um, when you'd have a second show with another 500 people, that's a lot of cars. And, and yeah. Now, but, did you see in the paper yesterday that the Flying Yankee yes. train, they yes. want to bring it back to Concord yes. now, it's stuck up in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They want to uh, re renovate it, but it's going to cost millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. And I wonder if there's, you know, some benefactor or, or whether there's a grant available from the federal government or someplace because they're often money to restore something that yeah. has an historical value. I if know. they played it up as it's yeah. an important part of Concord's history it. and yeah. it belongs here. And uh, because we have nothing in this community to represent that part of our history. And how many thousands of people worked for the railroad, oh, for I the B&M? Oh, I know. Um, I mean, for many people, yeah. that and Page Belting and mm. Rumford Press were really beyond the state. Were our biggest oh, yeah. employers they for were. a long time. Oh yeah, Rumford Press had and, three different shifts going, mm -hmm. and there were what, several hundred or more, a thousand or more. Whether easily, and, and once were, upon a time, I worked for seven years at Blue Cross, and we had over a thousand employees too, yeah. down on Pillsbury Street. Yeah, in fact, they used to take a lot of high school students from graduation mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. but. Uh, you know, it's just, it just shows that, you know, what we've lost and mm -hmm. nothing, the factories haven't come back. No, they haven't. But the train, when I saw that, I read mm -hmm. that article, and I yes. thought, gee, you know, I'm still hoping that they'll get a train back up here. Me too. And that would be Me perfect too. to have the flying Yankee mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. If they had a train, I would take a train to Boston frequently well, just to, I would. you know... No I offense to a bus, but I'd much rather take a train. I love the train. <clears throat> yes. I really yes. do. Even when I've taken it from Boston to Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. It's a long trip, yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, it's a relaxing Oh, it's trip. far more relaxing than on a bus because you, know? you can stretch yeah, and you move can. around. and the seats are nice and big. Yes. And you can walk her up there. I just love the train. It anyhow. is. It is. It's. But no, it's... Uh, so I'm really glad that you're doing well with this, um, Paul. And, it's uh, fun. It's, it's too bad you couldn't get somebody to come in with you, like, say, Eileen Fulton, if mm -hmm. she was in the area, mm -hmm. or Doris mm -hmm. Day. Or, mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be something? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I did a class called More Than Freckles, The Amazing Career of Doris Day, that did very well. And I gave the class her address so they could write to her, and she wrote back to people that wrote. Mm -hmm. She yeah. was wonder. She was delighted that, you know, you've She's taken a class about my movies. and. Well, she must be, what, in her mid-80s um, now? Oh, no, no, no. She'll be, um, she'll be 92 on April 3rd. My goodness. Yes. When she turned 90, she cut back from 100 laps a day in the pool to 50. She wow. said, "She said fifty laps a day at ninety is enough." Didn't she used to sing "Que Sera Sera"? Yes, yes, that I won the Academy so. Award. A, a trivia question: What's the only song from an Alfred Hitchcock movie to win an Academy Award? Yeah, and that's "Que Sera Sera." Whatever yeah. will be, will be. Yeah, from so the I man who knew too much. Yeah, I, I thought. Uh, so. Yes, I she has twenty-nine song. gold records. They're all in boxes in the garage. She doesn't put all of her stuff around. It's not. Important. That's not the important thing, which is nice because she's very rooted in reality. She wow. came to Concord in 1958. She stayed at the Franklin Pierce Inn on South Main Street. Wow. She went to the Concord Dairy Bar three days in a row and had seven different kinds of ice cream. Oh, my goodness. Because great. she loved Concord. She loved... Yep. She said, I love the downtown. You've got three five and dime stores. She loved that kind of feel. Mm. She said, it's so different than living in Beverly Hills. And she was, uh, she had been on the radio as a teenager with Betty Abbott, well, who was say. from Concord. Yeah. Betty was a professional mm. singer before coming to Concord. Mm. And so she and Doris and her husband, Marty, came through Concord on their way to Maine to visit Betty mm. and to, you know, just to see this town that Betty had settled in, that mm. Betty was always saying, oh, it's the most wonderful place, and yeah. it's such a great community sense, you know, here, and all of that, so. I wish, uh, if you ever talk to Eileen Fulton, yes. I would love to get her address okay. and send her a letter, because okay. that, to me, was the ultimate interview. To hear yes. I had our famous actress. yes. Sitting mm -hmm. with me at that hotel and interviewing her. Over at the her. courtyard by Marriott, and yes. I can still see her reaction when I asked her about the <clears throat> As the World mm -hmm. Turns. And she said, mm -hmm. how do you know so much about mm -hmm. that? You know, we watched it. My grandparents yes. every day. That mm -hmm. was a must. It was. It was. You know, but, 
Oh, she had a great time. She she did. She said, he's as good as Rex Reed. Oh, goodness gracious. Who had interviewed yeah. her a couple of years earlier for mm-hmm. a story in a New York newspaper. She loved that you were prepared, but that you weren't combative. I mean, you were enthused. You knew what you were talking about. And you made her very comfortable and mm-hmm. feel you know very, very good about it. And, I'm going to give her a nice basket from the chambers. Walking yes. her to Concord, mm-hmm. you know. And, mm-hmm. uh, and she had a great time. She yeah. did the... you. We're, you weren't able to come to no. the show, no. but we did. It was called Dinner with a <clears throat> Diva, yeah. and it was at the courtyard, and we filled. It was packed. Wow. People came from Rhode Island for oh to God. see her nightclub yeah. act that she yeah. did in New York. And she stayed. The show got over at 1030 at night. She stayed there till 1 a.m., signing autographs and posing for pictures with the people mm. that came. She mm. set up a table, and she sat there and talked with them and just so gracious about it. Even after doing this whole show, she wanted to make sure that each and every one of them had an opportunity to personally say hello. And I also, too, yesterday was in Hannaford, and I got to see a very special friend that I always enjoyed having on the show. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't seen him for a while. And that was former Governor John Lynch. Really? Oh, my goodness. He uh-huh. gave me a huge hug he did, Aww. and he just... He said, you know, Dick, I'm going to come on that show of yours again. Mm-hmm. He said, I said, mm-hmm. I know. You and Susan came on many times mm-hmm. when you were governor there. Mm-hmm. In fact, we I still hold the record for having them together, the first TV station mm-hmm. to have them on my show together. Mm-hmm. Even beat out Channel 9. Such a gracious man. Oh, he such, was so and good. And such a personality. Yeah, and he was very rest, restful. Mm. They are expecting... <clears throat> Their first grandchild uh-huh. any time now. Nice. So he was he was doing shopping yesterday. Nice. I, I had to, he was such a great guy. But, he did uh, a great job. He really he uh, was a wonderful person. But this is about the best part of the show is because talking about like you with what's going on with you down at the mm-hmm. Grand State College and uh, then kind of mixing a little bit of the past in there mm-hmm. and what you where you're at and. Well, that's why that we had here. Well, that's why you're so good at what you do is because you balance it. You manage to bring out the best in your guests and you keep it interesting for the viewer. You know, so it's it's a a wonderful mix. I try hard. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I make my mistakes. But when you've got a like I said, you've got a great director behind you. Yes, you you do. You feel very good. Absolutely. And I've had and I've had. And I've had good people too in the past. Don Chase, yes. Dan Chase yes. was wonderful. Yes. Oh, and absolutely. Kevin Tucker was a uh-huh. good, good job, and John Michael. But mm-hmm. they all had their times. But yes. but Ian has yes. really mm-hmm. put this show on the map with YouTube and everything. Else. Well, as you head to your nineteenth year, I can't wait to see what he'll do for the twentieth season. Yeah, let's hope we sure. make it. Yeah, <laughs> hope we make it. Though, uh, <laughs> But, uh, of course, I had my little beanie day for St. Patrick's mm-hmm. Day as we're getting ready to celebrate We are. Today. That's only a couple of weeks away. Yeah, Amazing. I know. Yeah, and, of course, I'm sure there'll be a parade because, oh, not in Concord. Manchester <laughs> has that one. But, uh-huh. <laughs> but, anyway, and Easter is so far uh, right behind it. And, 27th of March this year. Really it's, early. It is. It's mm. stupid. Yes. Yes. And then the Orthodox, they don't do they they don't do Easter till the first of May. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know if Grand State will keep that all that candy until then. They'll have mm. to for that. True, but, true. It's up there now. It just doesn't seem like it's Easter. Of course, the outside this weather is stupid. Yeah, well, it's it's just so changeable. You know, one day to the other. You, mm. It's like we're having a little of every season in the course of oh, a week I know. or two. Yeah, it's so you true, don't know yeah. how to dress, and you oh. don't know how to that thunder shower this morning. Exactly, Holy mackerel! That really huh. that really banged around, boy. On it the did. Air. It did. Did you have a thunder shower last night, Ian? Not Warner. Uh, it happened. I was unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're conscious now. <laughs> I was sleeping, so... About 2 o'clock this morning. Mm. The, the lightning and yes. everything else. It was a mm-hmm. humdinger for February. It was. It was. But uh, well, we're getting ready to close out here and around town. And it's been a pleasure having you, Paul, as Thank always, you. to come in and talk about your new pro- your project you got going at Granite State College on Ollie. And if you, the viewers, would like to take his class, uh, by all means... What number can they reach you at or um, reach that at? Well, they can uh, go on the website to Granite State College, Ollie at Granite State College. Uh, it's on Hall Street, 25 Hall Street. Or you can pick up the phone and call Ollie at, of course I would, um, 
sorry, uh, 603 513 1368. There you go, register. Okay. That'd be fun. And how much it costs to register? Uh, $30 to become a member, and then each class oh. varies depending on length and the number of weeks. Sure. But it's all very affordable, and there are scholarships available for people that have a difficult time. Great. Well, there's my signal. So, with that in mind, thank you to my director, Ian, and thanks to Paul Brogan, and everybody have a great day. We'll see you soon on Dick Patton on Around Town.